Good morning. This is a continuation in the video series that is going to be discussing Ayurvedic tips and tricks to achieve balance and nourishment of the body. Today we're going to be discussing uh, the precepts of diet, nutrition, and integration of Ayurvedic concepts into our day-to-day -day life in order to better nourish the body. We're going to be going over three points in particular. We're going to be speaking of how we can produce a balanced and complete nourishment and how this relates to balance in the body as well as the body's ability to heal. We're going to be speaking of the significance of an individual's uh, constitution or prakriti and how this relates in being able to achieve balance as well as optimize the digestion. And lastly, we're going to be uh, speaking about just general rules that we should be abiding by in order to maintain a uh, sama agni or a balanced uh, digestive fire. So first we're going to be talking about how one can accomplish balanced and complete nourishment. We have two factors that we really have to consider in order to accomplish balanced nourishment. There is the food which is being eaten as well as the eater who is eating. And these two in combination can either uh, combine to create a balanced nourishment and complete digestion or one of the two factors can lead to incomplete digestion which leads to imbalance in the tissue. The eater must be in a lightened state of mind. Um, even the most nourishing meal, whenever one is charged negatively or in a low vibrational state of mind, will impact the body's ability to fully digest this food. The food needs to be whole, fresh, organic, local when possible, um, as well as hopefully free of pesticides, herbicides, uh, and genetic manipulation, which usually comes back to the organic point, but in other countries, I know that this doesn't necessarily um, go. Um, an individual is going to have to consider their prakriti, consider their constitution in order to offer food to the body that is nourishing for their individual constitution. In Ayurveda, we have vata, pitta, and kapha, which can combine in a total of seven different forms. Um, there's vata pitta, uh, pitta kapha, um, kapha vata, there's vata pitta kapha, and then there's vata, oh, vata pitta kapha altogether, I should say. And there's the separate vata, pitta, and kapha. Um, and all of these are basically just different combinations of constitutions, of elements that are going to affect the individual's um, constitution as well as affect what should be consumed in order to balance out our prakriti, our, our holistic um, constitution. So understanding the doshas, as we've already discussed in previous videos, Understanding these doshas as they relate to the elements is going to help in understanding how to then nourish your body according to your own constitution. So, for instance, it, I am personally a pita, I'm a, a fire, a fire water element, and so I need cooling foods. Um, so if we consider what foods are opposite to our imbalance or our dosha, um, we can then begin to integrate these food items into our day-to-day -day life in order to balance out our tendency. Um, so there's different flavors or tastes that are associated with each of the doshas. And fiery foods are going to aggravate a pita, whereas cooling foods are going to balance a pita. Um, and then... Uh, 
three general dietary protocols and habits that anybody should favor to avoid and uh, to avoid imbalance and to maintain balance uh, or sama agni are going to include um, that mindset. So establishing that. Uh, so if we think about the yogis up in the Himalayas, it weren't it wasn't that they were picky and they decided, well, I'm a pita, so you know I really shouldn't have these spicy foods. If a yogi is up in the Himalayas, whatever food comes to them, they're going to have a mindset of gratitude. They're going to consume it holistically uh, it, with um, ganas, with desire. They're going to be excited. They're going to um, ingest with their heart and their soul, completely being in that gratitude mindset. So it's, m m I would argue, more importantly than the food that we're consuming is the mindset that we're consuming it with. We need to maintain that attitude of gratitude, being positive towards whatever energy that we're ingesting, so that whatever it is that we're ingesting, it already has that positive quality associated with it in our own physiology. This is going to help um, it be integrated into the cells with already that charge. So I think that's the most important thing. Um, as well as sticking to organic foods. Uh, organic is going to be good in that it's elevating uh, consciousness. So we're not just consuming whatever it is that we can find. Modern day, most likely most of us aren't yogis in the Himalayas, especially if we're watching this video. We have options, especially in our consumerist society. We should take advantage of these options. We should be conscious about what we're consuming. Read the label. See what it is in your food. If there's something that you don't know what it is, research it. And this is just augmenting your awareness of what it is that you're consuming. And this alone is going to help direct. If there's something in your food that inside, intuitively, there's there's resistance, then likely it's, it's not going to be beneficiary to your physiology. Um, lastly,